I think with both, it's a question of timing, right? So we were always ever only going to be able to build one piece of market rate or affordable on the site. I mean, you, there's only one YMCA site, old YMCA site. And so I think the conversation is still valid from the closed session, which is, okay, we're going to move forward with a market rate piece on the Y site. But I think the direction from council was really clear that we need to be incredibly proactive in finding another affordable project to do in the downtown area. And I think what we heard from the mayor is his commitment to be just as aggressive getting, making that happen as you know he was you know developing kind of the market rate piece of it. So I don't know that both is off the table. You know, three rivers, I think there's questions. It could be three rivers, it could be somebody else. I mean, certainly we don't have a specific bird in hand, but ultimately we were only gonna be able to choose one of the options. So I think the, the discussion is still very much in bounds, which is, okay, we're moving forward with market rate, but now we gotta go figure out how we get another affordable site and be really, really aggressive about making that happen. And I think that seems to be the pretty universal commitment from council. Mr. Mayor, members, one thing, um, I mean, those rents that Stencil's proposing of 1400 to 1550, I mean, if we're ever to get out of our housing challenges, it's really going to be through market rate. The affordable things, while we did Fox Point and we're debating this other one and putting another application forward, it, the state doesn't have enough resources to help us. If we don't help ourselves and drive the market rate production, I mean, having rents like that, when we talk to other developers that we've passed on that had asks that were significantly higher than the stencil group, I mean, this throws gas on driving other development in town. And so to the mayor's point about opening up other affordable units, um, you know, may not be a one-to-one -one ratio for every market rate when you open up an uh, affordable unit. It, I mean, it's, it's significant. So we'll have an impact not only in helping create the market rate opportunities, but opening up affordable ones, and then having the private market prove the marketplace with these prevailing rents. When you look at the housing study, the prevailing rents is, is, is a huge component for any developer looking to come to your community. And we had to, you know, plead with them that yes, the, the, the market rate study indicates those types of rents that would be necessary for a market rate will be challenging. But we've told them, you know, people are willing to pay if they get a good product. What we have out there now, they're not, they're not willing to pay for it. So we're arbitrarily held back um, we have professionals and we try to hook them up with the Hormel Young Professionals Group that did a survey and try to plead with them that there is that demand. And then, you know, thankfully the Flats on 21, you know, really helped a tremendous amount and just, wow, in a pandemic, the developer's telling us they filled it up faster than any units that he has and he's no small residential developer. So to have that kind of proof of, um, <clears throat> rates is huge. They've got 20 to 24 people on a waiting list at Flats on 21. And uh, the manager told me today they had 15 inquiries over the weekend. I mean, that's a, that's a massive demand. And I think in large part why Mr. Stencil's interested in this site, just doing another project in Austin and um, uh, diversifying his risk, having a different product to be able to offer locally and having those higher rents just is, is really a big deal. So thanks for your time. Anything else on this topic? Or if we move on to bull fishing? Bull? Bow fishing? That's coming from me. That's coming from you? Yep. I thought you were the engineer. <laughs> I had an inquiry from a citizen who uh, talked to uh, Captain Clennon, and he does, he's interested in bull fishing carp. That's it, I'm going to hang up. Uh, apparently, you tie a rope. You tie a rope. You tie a rope to an arrow, and it's pretty short. And obviously carper good for nothing and this guy does it as a hobby and he gives it to some farmer who gives it to his pigs or whatever he does so he he talked to todd clennon and we do have an ordinance about no discharge of firearm or bow and arrow in city limits correct chief 
Um, so Todd sent him out behind the old mill where it's county out there and he could do it out there. So what he was asking was if we could do open up the fishing season with bow fishing carp. I guess you do this in other places. Um, or maybe allow him like we do the deer hunt in the city for X amount of time. If he could do it for X amount of time, you know, for the month of August or whenever you fish for carp. Um, so I asked Craig if I could bring this forward just to get your thoughts on getting rid of some carp that are direct. Um, yeah, we'd, we'd have to tweak the 10.4 ordinance. Currently, use of bow and arrow is unlawful for any person to shoot a bow and arrow except in a physical education program in a school supervised by a member of its faculty, a community-wide supervised class, or an event specifically authorized by the chief of police or a bow and <coughs> arrow range authorized by council. For the deer hunt, we kind of do the event specifically authorized by console, which is where we get that one from. We'd probably have to write something within the ordinance to either allow it for fishing within 100 feet of the river or something similar that lines up with uh, the DNR statutes. Uh, DNR does allow it under their fishing guideline books. Uh, there are a couple different seasons. I know during the early seasons under statute, you could only fish for those type of fish from a boat. So perhaps you could also, you know, make it a boat only versus people walking the shore. Um, you know, things of that nature that we could take a look at. I, I don't have a strong opinion on it uh, one way or another. It's not something I've ever uh, necessarily engaged in. And uh, but we would need a, <clears throat> a couple tweaks, see how it fits with uh, those statutes. Uh, as, a, as a general rule, the police department does not engage in most hunting and fishing regulations every once in a while we get someone shooting mm -hmm. squirrels from a car or something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah well we, we cite it we cite we cite them for you <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so yeah and so we might we might dust off the hunting regulations for that but generally i'm not aware of not that we probably couldn't but we don't check for fishing licenses and stuff as far as I know. And we'd probably not do anything with a guy floating around a boat in East Side Lake shooting carp either, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I haven't been on that waterway in a while. I, certainly you can see them flopping around, especially in that north side where there's a lot of matted vegetation. How well you'd see them, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is a seasonal thing when you get some water clarity to actually spot them. Uh, there are other species that are allowed. Mostly, again, they're going to be rough fish, bullhead, sucker, red horse, carp, buffalo, sheep's, sheep's head, bowfin, and gar. Those are the ones that are allowed. You're not going to be able to shoot a bass or a northern or something like that uh, anywhere in the state. So, Does he say like East Side Lake or a particular lake? He, well, he went out to start behind the old mill, but he was asking about East Side Lake. I'm wondering if we just let, you know, charge this to the to Kevin to come up with something like a deer hunt where you do like a week in the summer that it's bull fish season or something. So otherwise, you know, I don't know how to start this thing. Yeah, if you want to authorize it as some kind of special event. I think he's looking for but, more than maybe a week because he's, like I said, those farmers gives them just whatever eats them. So I think he's looking for more of a <laughs> couple months or something. I think it'd be, I, I'd be supportive of Kevin taking a look at, you know, how have other cities handled this? I, I mean, I don't see any rapid downsides to it. I did want to make sure there hasn't, you know, probably don't want a fourth grader out in a canoe getting shot, you know, so right. just make sure we're not missing something. Right. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Let's uh, just task Kevin and the park and rec would come up with, with something that might work. If, if not- Can I add some input? Works, I don't know. Sure. Is that a carp Shame. behind you on the wall? Is that a mount of a carp? <laughs> Uh, generally speaking with carp, having done this as a kid and as a, an adult with my kid, with um, sucker hunting up north and carp fishing in former communities where I lived when I was a teenager, 
Uh, they generally run when they're spawning, and that's late spring into early summer, so you won't see them all the time. Uh, a question is, would you want this done along all public waterways along the river and the creeks as well as just allowing in the lake or, or what your thoughts would be? Um, generally, you'd be eliminating a small percentage of the rough fish. I'm not particularly fond of the thought of, of a bow, people with a bow out in the parks. Um, conversely, when it comes to the bow fishing season, or sorry, the bow hunting season for the deer, these are permitted people who had to take a test to get approved to do that. Um, there's limited hours for the bow hunting when it comes to deer because they can be out there during the daylight hours or a half hour after sunset or a half hour before sunrise. Bow fishing, you can really go 24 hours a day. There's some limitations on how close you can be to a residence after the sun goes down, but really they could be out there. Uh, the DNR does regulate where they can throw the fish and you're saying there's a, there's a guy who would take them. Um, having been one who has seen people leave them behind when they catch them or when they've speared or shot them with a bow, they get to be a stinky mess if people don't take them with them. And you're saying you have an outlet for them, Council Member Fisher, but uh, there are people too that wouldn't be responsible and put them in a pail and take them along. Uh, I have limited interest in, in allowing for such, but that's, that is, of course is up to you. I will research it further upon your request. Yeah. You know, after after listening to Mr. Nelson, I think there probably is more downside than upside to this. If one requests, you know, I think we can deal with one request like you did. Hey, you know what? Go out in the county, go in the streams, go out, rather than have some kind of a hard to enforce ordinance where now you're scaring beachgoers or kids in rafts or who knows what. I think I don't like the optics of having some people walk around with a bow. So if it's one guy and he's got a place to put them, yeah, encourage him to go out where you can get them and and say, but the city's not interested in, or that's just my take. He was just, I think he was interested more in Eastside Lake. Perhaps there's more carp in Eastside Lake than the rivers, but. Anybody else have anything? Do you want to go forward to this or, or let, it, let it die like a carp on a beach? Yeah. Okay, I'm interested in motions. Yeah, tell them to get, tell them to get a group. <laughs> Okay, so that is, uh, the, we, if you want to, if he wants to encourage a group to come before the council to say why they need an opener or a, or a bull fish <clears throat> season for carp, then, then we'll listen to it. But just one guy making the request, I think at this point, maybe isn't uh, something we want to, because we won't be able to enforce it or it'd be difficult to enforce. Okay, I'll reach out to him and if he's got some buddies that want to join him at some time, then we'll arrange it. All right, uh, administrative report, Craig? Nothing. Open discussion? I have to not one second, but Congress is going to have to be meeting. Mr. Hill, you're calling me today? Yes? Okay. So Congress is part of the next meeting. Here, here was my take. He's called before on some similar issues with when we had storm damage and we opened up the fairgrounds just to help offset the expense or just time of people hauling stuff. So, and he called me then and said, oh, come on. So he's interested. So he's now put in private. So, so my take on my told Dave is, so he's got, he sells, uh, not mulch compost. So the city has compost from their leaf site and they dump it at the skate park. He says, that's a good truckload be a thousand dollars. I said, well, Dave, you know what I, what I think that is, is people with hatchbacks and a bucket taking a five gallon bucket at a time. What I see your business is people with a truck or trailer. And so I said, I think we can do both. You know, I don't think we're stealing your business. But then I got thinking, well, what about this, Dave? Like we do with the sludge, uh, we, we have some farmer pay us, right, to have that dumped, or the trucker out, the truck guy gets paid to take this, or he, he pays us. Yeah, so I thought, well, well, for our expense, would you be interested in saying, okay, the city can deliver it to you, Hillier, instead of delivering it to the, to the, the skate park, clean up the skate park and, and say, you pay us for our time of, of an employee and a truck gas and we'll dump it where you want it on your property and then you go ahead and sell it but you pay us something for our time yeah and the one thing he brought up with me is that he had talked to steven and they are screening it yeah. but i think they screen it for our projects i don't think i wanted to get clarification because i've gotten it before down at the skate park and it's not screened yeah. 
if they're screening it now, then maybe they shouldn't screen what they're putting That's out what, for free. Yep, we talked about that. He, but he, the he other thing is, is the, the citizens are pro providing the compost for nothing. So that's why we're giving it back to them for nothing. You know, and granted, he does make money off of it. But I think it's like you say, somebody that really wants some good compost is going to go buy it from Dave Hillier before they go down to the skate park and or a truck load throw it in the their air. trunk of their car. Yeah, I just their, thought because he's 15, five gallon. And gallon Stephen gallon. says we're using it for our own projects, which we are road projects or whatever. So we need some of it. I get that. So I, I, I guess if we were screening it before we're putting it at the skate park, yeah. let's stop that. That's what I was saying. I even said, I said, clear the problem. If, if we don't screen it, you do. He's, he said he bought a screener. So I thought maybe, maybe we just dump it Ross without screening it to him. And then we keep some for ourselves to do it. But I don't know. I'm just kicking around. But yeah. And I was looking at it. My conversation with him is, is there a revenue opportunity for the city? I mean, we're going to have some challenging conversations here in a couple months. I mean, we're already paying somebody to go dump it, you know, can we offset that cost and or turn a slight profit by giving it to him? It takes out the competition. So he's happy with it. You know, he's getting product. We've got an outlet for it versus, you know, dumping it. So I told him, Hey, come back to us with, with a proposal for what you want to pay. And if taxpayers can make money off of it, look at it. No, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, sure. Sure. Could probably. <laughs> I, I kind of had asked him what had changed because I'm pretty sure we've been doing this for a long, you know, a long time. And I, I don't, and, and I actually told him the screening. Yeah, maybe. Okay. We sometimes struggle to have folks maintaining their homes. I would hate to take away a nice free option for folks who are doing that. Um, and I actually told Mr. Hillier, I've actually never used our compost site because I live by him. So I always just pay him for it. I said, it's great. Yeah, I think the only other item is we have to be careful when we're dealing with somebody that's making a for profit off our, our, yeah, our compost basically. So we would want to make sure with Byram that we were okay there. Uh, the screening did come about with there was um, debris and stuff that was blowing around the park and into the no pond in that. So I think that was kind of the genesis of why are we allowing this uh, pile to kind of pollute our park and the lake. So just FYI. So moved.